Dear friends, this episode of our uh, BG Dental Tips is about functional dentistry, actually about condylography and axiography, and I will be happy to show you how we will uh, analyze our condylographical tracings in a full mouse rehabilitation case planning. So before I start, just to remind you again, don't forget to follow us, to put like to this video, and to share this video with your colleagues because it's very, very important for us and it motivates us to do more and more useful content that you can use in your daily practice. Let's go. Hello everybody. We are doing another live stream here for uh, you, my friends, and there will be our stream dedicated to a therapeutic position uh, definition in a click case, so we have patient. During our course, uh, big function and occlusion course, we have our participant, ex dentist. She is our patient at the same time, and she has a click in her joint. So we performed our um, uh, diagnostic procedure. We did uh, a lot of a lot of steps for uh, diagnostics like uh, face bow, occlusiograms, uh, muscle palpation, so on and so on. And we also did axiography. So here you can see the part of the axiography. It's a Modro device. We use it for axiography and many other things to evaluate the case. So we are doing now a protrusion. And on the protrusion, we will be able to see on the tracing here, on the right side here, you will be able to see um, the click. So basically, if I will play the movement, I would like you to see this area, not teeth, but this area. So we go here, this way. It's a protrusive track, full uh, amplitude, and then she goes back, and when she goes back here in this area, I will zoom it, so we can have some kind of belly, or uh, we call it eight, number eight, you see, like, like this, number eight. So basically, how we interpret this tracing, so when we go forward, so this is the trace forward, so when she goes forward, in this area, she jumps on the disc, okay, then all this uh, rest uh, trace, she comes, she goes with disc, and when she goes back, in this zone here, just before this cross, in this zone, she jumps from the disc. So actually, when you do palpation, you can feel the click uh, during palpation here. So how we can use this data for, for example, to test the position? I would like to keep my tracing just before this cross here, just before this area. So I assume that in this area, in this moment, she still uh, stands, her condyle still stands on the disc, just here. I will take it like that, okay? Then we can measure how much in a protrusion we have uh, the position where we are on the disc still. So in our case, it's around one and a half or one and two millimeters from one side and another side, pretty much similar, but she has click mainly on the, on the right condyle. So basically we can get this position for our dental technician for uh, making our splint. So I would like to test drive uh, this position with a splint. Let me just double check again. Yeah, the moment we st she still stands on the disc, I, I think it will be safer if I'll go a little bit more forward in here on this belly yeah so that's better for me okay i will stand on this position so it's like uh, let me just check again it is for about uh, in a protruded track like one almost two millimeters let's say one and nine one and nine one condyle another condyle is uh, 1.7 okay so here is the position our estimated therapeutic position where she will have no click, no complications, no complaints. And now I will need to give this position to my dental technician for a test drive the position. So we test drive position with a splint, which is called stabilizer, the splint that holds the mandible in that position. Uh, so how I will uh, give room for the splint, because if I will just send this to my dental tech, we have no room to make the, the splint here. So we need to open some video. In this case, we need to open video. And here is the function, rotate around axis. So we go this way and we will create space or room for the splint. How we do that? We just open video to have at least one and a half, uh, two millimeters 
between uh, posterior and anterior teeth. So that room will be enough for uh, the spleen. I can measure this room. I will use uh, the tool and I can check how much space between uh, molar teeth I have uh, here. Let's just take a look. So we have 2.5. It's too much, so I can just close a little bit more. Just close a bit like that. Let me recalculate. Yeah, 2.1. 2 okay, that's good. Let me let me just check also from another side because sometimes for, from one side you may have enough space, from another side you may not have enough. So let me just uh, recalculate space in this uh, area. Okay, and then we will be able to send this data to the lab. So 1.8, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. It's not bad. It's not bad. So we can actually now save this position here, confirm, and this position will be used by dental technician to create a splint and then we may change, check the, the position with a splint and if everything will be okay, no pain, no, mu no muscle, muscle reaction, no click, and then uh, we will uh, probably uh, do another step of our treatment. In this case, it's an orthodontic case. You can see very steep position of incisors and very steep position of the uh, rest uh, of upper teeth. So we need to make the upper arch larger and uh, it will create automatically freedom for the lower jaw and the lower jaw automatically will be moved forward by itself and then uh, the result of the case will be predictable and comfortable for the patient. So once again, this was done during our function and occlusion course. My friends, if you didn't attend this course yet, I invite you because we always do uh, have uh, interesting cases and uh, one of our participants is our model. So you will be able to see the whole step of the treatment planning and diagnostic procedures step by step. Hope this video was interesting. I know that the topic is pretty controversial, very difficult. Occlusion is always difficult stuff, but our duty is to show you as many different tips as possible related to different fields of dentistry and next time we will show you something more and more useful and interesting. So stay tuned and don't forget to follow us.